Hey, this is Justin with DayTradingMarkets.com, and I thought I would also do a uh, replay of gold today. It also wasn't the most exciting day in gold either, but you know the whole point of this video is just to talk about thought process, decision-making process, and look at what the evidence is. Again, this is a one-minute chart on gold. You can use this on any time frame and essentially any market. Um, and just as a, a quick review, again, what we are looking at here are various pieces of real-time market data driven evidence that's happening in real time and it's as if there are various puzzle pieces and the more puzzle pieces or pieces of evidence that come together the more clear you can see the market and the more of an edge you'll have on particular trades so the idea here is to look at what each of these different pieces of evidence are telling us to try to make better sense of the market so that we can therefore make better decisions and the first piece of evidence that we really like to focus on kind of our first building block is what we call these relative aggression bars just to give a little bit of a background there this is based on order flow we look at some more we look at more than order flow but it's based on order flow and the idea is that the market is only going to move if one side buyers or sellers is more aggressive than the other so this allows you to see somewhat under the, the surface of the market, not just price action, what's happening above the surface, but what's happening below the surface before, because order flow is what leads to price action movement. So these, these real-time relative aggression bars are helping us do two things. Number one, determine which side, buyers or sellers, is more dominant at a given moment. And then number two, determine to what degree that domination is occurring. Is it moderate, strong, extreme? And we have three varieties or versions levels of aggression bars level one which are moderate um, level two which are telling you strong buying or selling the green or red and these are colors are changeable and then level three which is extreme and we really want to watch these level two and level threes as you can see they don't happen very often and when they do we want to really pay attention because that means something's going on in the market and that's giving us information and this can be a bit of a road map to what is going on so um, with that said let's just run a little a little bit of a replay but before I do I'm not going to show the level one bars you can remove these I'm just going to show the level two and level three bars to make it more simple as well as some of the other tools so let's go to the gold market and you know we've gapped up from the prior day let me just run this here uh, and I'll pause it when we need to pay attention to anything. Um, and you can see here that at this point we've had no level twos or level three bars at all. Um, what we'll want to do is kind of wait for the first uh, sighting of a level two or a level three. And that's going to give us some decent information in terms of what the market is doing. Okay, so you can see here, let me pause that. That's our first, you know, it's not a level three structure, but it's our first major structure of the day, which is a level two. And so in the short term, we want to see number one, if we get follow through higher, that means this thing is likely to take off. If, however, the low of this bar gets taken out, and we have a full bar below there, it means at least short term, the market was gonna, is going to head a little bit lower. Okay, so we've had the first major push by one side or the other. So we want to see if we can attract more buying or if it's a bit of a, a capitulation now it's not a level three but it is level two and it's our first structure to work with so it's something okay so let's play this uh, play this forward and see what happens here I'll put this in, in fast speed and again this is a this was a pretty slow day relatively speaking for gold uh, but you know it's all about thought process whether the market's giving a ton of opportunity or limited that in itself is information so we want to monitor that and see what's going on so you can see that you know as this is going we had full bars below the low of this bar before we had anything above so short term we would expect the market to move a little bit lower and now you know and how, how can you use that there's not necessarily anything tradable at this point but if you had another method that you might be using and you got a short signal that's giving you and let me pause it here that would be giving you information that that short might make more sense than less if you got something of a long signal somewhere in here on another method you might be using uh, that's giving you kind of a think twice type of an indication now here's our next major structure it's a level two selling bar again not a level three but it's a level two we want to pay attention and we want to see can we get follow through or can we get rejection now if we get rejection and this thing starts to head higher it's a pretty good sign at least for the near term that we're in a bit of a chop situation in other words we've tested the high with relatively good buying aggression 
aggression, no follow through. Now we're testing the low with relatively good selling aggression. Let's see if we can have some follow through. If that happens, rejection on the high, follow through on the low, pretty good ind indication we're going to have a nice little leg lower. If we get, on the other hand, rejection higher, we're going to chop around and probably go test the highs again. Okay, so that's kind of the thought process at this point. So let's play this forward again. So early on, it's looking like, there you go, we're getting some rejection off of these lows. So we're probably going to go higher and test test the highs. And that rejection also occurred on a level two buying bar. You can see these, uh, let me pause it real quick and just take, take a note here. You can see these uh, dots and triangles. Those are what we call decelerations. And the idea here. Um, is a lot of people think are those trade setups no that's these are just one another piece of evidence another tool and the idea here like if we look at this bar here you can see that this bar's high was higher than its prior bar but within that bar the level of buying aggression was decreasing or decelerating whereas if this bar which has a higher high than its prior bar had a buying aggression within the bar order flow that was increasing the expectation would be that it would, it would continue higher so it's on a, on a short-term basis telling us we would expect the market to turn around now this is not something that you'd want to trade blindly. These are not trade setups. This is something that's going to give you kind of an extra one or two percent edge. If you already have another reason for getting into the market, it can act as confirmation. Uh, in, like I said, adding another one or two percent to it. So you don't want to trade these blindly. They're just giving you some very short-term information as to which if the market's accelerating or decelerating. Okay, so I just want to touch on that real quick. Um, so. Let's uh, let's play this forward again, and you can see again we've tested the high on uh, positive aggression. Now we've tested the low on on some negative aggression. Both of those have been rejected. So at this point we would expect we're going to go test the high, and there you go. Okay, so here's a situation where um, we're testing the high again, and it's occurring on a level three buying aggression bar, and so. What this is telling us is this This is probably one of two things. Whenever we see a level three bar on the high or low of the day, it's either the beginning of something where we expect the market to take off, or it can be capitulation where it's probably going to be the high of the day. And so if you have a, if you're heading into the day with a bullish indication, that's a good, that's a good sign to just jump on board or wait for the low of this to get tested and potentially get long there. If you head into the day with more of a bearish uh, outlook, then you'd want to see if this gets follow through, in which case your bearish outlook would, would take a little bit of a, a, a dubious turn. Or if this gets rejected, then we have probably have a pretty good indication that the high of the day is in place. Okay, so again, uh, the first thing we want to look is can the low of this bar hold? If it holds, we would expect a move higher. Okay, if the low of this bar cannot hold, we would expect that likely the high of the day is, is put in place. Okay. And the, you know the gold market, um, the the gold market has has certainly been in more of a downtrend of of late. So it's not something where we would want to just jump on board market order. Okay, let me pause this here. What we're seeing here is a situation where we're in a downtrend, bigger picture, uh, in the gold market. High of the day is tested on a level three buying aggression bar. We kind of expect this to get rejected, and if so, we think the high of the day is in place. You can see that it has been rejected. Okay, and we have a trade that we call the level three reversal trade, where uh, in a situation like this, where you get a full bar below a level three bar that's on the high of the day, we would like to think about getting short somewhere right around the low of that bar, and try to hold that as long as possible, thinking the high of the day is in place. Now this happens to coincide with a not only is the low taken out, but it's taken out on the opposite, uh, an extreme selling aggression bar. Okay, and when that happens, we have kind of a a bit of a of a sweet spot here, where these two bars are overlapping. You can see where the level three bars are overlapping. In a sense, that's probably a pretty good area to be thinking about getting short. Thinking about, uh, and, and let me just draw a uh, a little box there, because that's kind of a key area that we're going to want to watch. Because again, the logic is high of the day tested on a level three buying aggression bar. It's rejected. Not only is it rejected, but it's rejected on a level three selling bar. Where those overlap could be a pretty sweet spot because, again, we expect the excuse me, we expect the high of this level three selling bar to act as resistance. We would expect the low of this level three uh, buying aggression bar on the high of the day that was rejected to act as resistance as well. So it's a bit of, a, of an area that we want to monitor. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. 
this is all in our training. We talk about this all the time. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, if you're not too familiar, I, I want to try to spell it out a bit. Okay, and now you can see, let me pause this. You can see also that um, we have a situation here. Let me take this off just to make it clear, where we have in real time this support resistance zone that's formed. You can see we bounced off of uh, the support down here. This is a resistance area where a lot of things are lining up at this point because, again, we have a resistance area, so all things equal, we would expect this area to act as resistance. Bigger picture, our bias is down. We have rejection of this level three bar on the high of the day. So you can see how a lot of things are kind of coming into place for getting short somewhere in this area. Okay, We have a few things working in our favor. Now the filter is not red, it's more of a neutral, but you know that's just another piece. But all in all, we do have several pieces of, these, of this evidence. That's what we talk about. Several of these pieces of evidence coming together, relative aggression bar structure, support resistance zone, uh, bigger picture bias. A few of those things are coming together that are giving us an indication that there is a pretty decent edge if we were looking to get uh, short somewhere in this area. Now what you can do is you can wait to see what happens once the market tests in there. Do we get a deceleration? Do we get uh, some selling aggression that comes in off of that? But that's the thought process at this point. We think we have a high of the day in place, or at least that's what our edge is. We also think that the high of this selling aggression bar should act as resistance. It coincides with this resistance zone. Okay, so let's monitor that area. Again, this is about thought process. Um, you know, there can be a situation where this zone does not hold. Okay, and doesn't mean it wasn't a good thought process. The idea to get to get short somewhere in here certainly makes good sense, whether it works out or not. Okay, I think that's so important to talk about process as opposed to, to results. Okay, so now you can see we're kind of testing between this uh, support and resistance zone, but you're not, you're not hurt if you got short there. Now we're kind of just watching, is there reason, any reason to get out of the market? Is there any major buying aggression that's come into the market at this point? No, so if it made sense to get short here, it probably makes sense to still stay short at that point. Okay. Now you can see we've had a lot of order flow coming in. This thing's starting to, you can see that the filter, well, right before, let me pause that. You could see right before, well, there's two things I want to talk about here. Right before this thing had a breakdown, right in here, you saw that the filter went strongly bearish. That was telling us that conditions are really changing. There's a lot of bullish, or bearish activity coming into the market. So then we had a breakdown lower. You could see that happening. Now there's another situation here where we have two level three selling bars right in a row. Okay, and this is what we call our sweet spot trade, uh, where you can see where they they only overlap by about a tick here, but that's a pretty sweet location to to get long because what we're seeing is a level three selling bar. Not only did it have follow through, but it it had follow through lower on it, another extreme selling aggression bar. So this area right in here should be a pretty sweet spot to be getting short. That also happen. It's all about context. It also happens to be in the context of a bigger picture down auction red filter. A lot of things are kind of coming into in, into play right here. So that's kind of the idea. Let me just draw a little box there um, right here on this kind of sweet spot area. And uh, we'll let this play forward. But again, that's the thought process. So right there, limit order certainly makes sense. Now we'll go test the low of the day, see what happens. So the expectation here is that you would think this is going to go test the low of the day. Now here's a situation, let me pause this, where uh, it's starting, the market's starting to show a little consolidation. Okay, so we have this area here. It's a yellow zone, which we call caution, like a yellow light instead of a, a it normally would be green if there was actually expected to be support. This is telling us this is an area we want to monitor for support, but there is a lot of weight on the market. So it's not as strong of a support as, as you would necessarily have if it was green. Okay, that's the idea. But it is telling us the pure uh, selling domination, we need, to, we need to at least watch out. Let's play that forward then.
Now, I don't have the level one bars on here, but here's a situation where if you're in a trade, some level one bar, we started to see some level one buying bars right in this area, where that's an indication if you're, if you're short, well, at least think about it. So in this case, if you scaled out a little bit, you took a profit on that sweet spot trade. Uh, if you didn't, then you, you had a, a break even most likely. But still, it was a good, it made sense. It was a good trade. And at this point, what we're looking for is, let me pause this again. We have this, there's kind of two scenarios that we're playing with. You can see the filter is no longer as bearish. It's still bearish. But we want to see kind of, can this zone right in here, where the extreme selling came in, can the high of that hold? Okay. If not, we would expect to go test the highs. If it can, then we would expect to probably go test the lows. Okay, but that's kind of the thought process. It's like when I was in Little League playing infield, my coach always told me, what are you going to do if the ball is hit to you? And you kind of have a plan. Well, if it's hit to the right, I'm going to throw it to third base. If it's hit to my left, I'm going to throw it to first base, or whatever the case may be. You want to kind of have a plan, and that's the idea here. If this area can hold, we'd expect the lows to get tested. If this area gets taken out, we would expect the highs to get tested. Okay, so that's kind of the thought process at that point. So let's play this forward. And that would especially be the case if you, if this was not only taken out, but taken out with some buying aggression as well. So the market's just kind of piddling along right now. <clears throat> no real major buying or selling aggression to, to work with at this point. That So there's a buying aggression bar. Can it's low, low hold? Nope. Okay, we would expect this thing to, to probably want to head lower because again it was rejected bigger picture down bias buying structures are getting rejected that means bears are basically in control of this market at this point until we have evidence the other way you'd want to watch out for longs and you'd want to be willing more than willing to get into potential shorts so hopefully this is, is making some degree of sense you can see this is not magic this is not some um, you know, robotic thing. This is about, there's a selling aggression. Can that get follow through? If so, uh, we would expect the low to get tested. Low of the day. So again, you can see this is a tool. It's giving you pieces of evidence that you have to be the type of person that wants to see really good, unique evidence that you can't see everywhere else. But you still have to be the per a type of person that's willing to try to make sense of it. And the type of person that wants to decipher this type of activity uh, it's not some if you're a robotic black and white thinker you're not gonna like this if you're more of a malleable thinker where you like to try to put things together and make sense of things and you understand the power of um, getting good information so that you can increase your edge even if you increase your edge one percent two percent five percent ten percent you understand the power of that then you're probably gonna love this software it's not for everyone but if you if you kinda get this um, if this resonates with you, you're probably going to love it just based on experience. If this doesn't make sense to you, let us. In, you're still interested? Let me know, and I can try to clarify something. But if you're looking for more black and white, you know, buy on green, sell on red, this this is not not for you. Um, that's okay. It's just uh, different philosophies. So you can see it's pretty slow here, um, but still we haven't breached that where that extreme selling came in at this point. So we would still think all things equal it's it's pretty slow but we don't we would still be leaning toward the downside and you can see our filter still a little red um, okay so now we're testing the lows that caution zone can that hold or will we break through it if we break through it we're probably looking for a pretty nice leg down but you can see that it is it is holding a bit um, and we're coming to the end of the regular trading session anyway. But hopefully that makes sense. Again, this wasn't the most exciting day ever, but it's about whether it's a, a, a all-you-can-eat buffet of opportunity or whether you have to be a little more judicious. It's all about making sense of evidence to try to make better decisions. So hopefully that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I'll be happy to uh, go, uh, go forward with that and, and, and answer them. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks.